This is a revised version of Module uh, 3, Lesson 12. I did a little reflecting upon the process uh, for some of these problems, and I'm going to take a slightly different approach. I think this, this might be a little simpler. I think it'll be clear, and it'll also help you understand Lesson 14 that comes up a little bit later in this module. Okay, let's look at the problem here. Now, unlike lesson number 11, our fraction in the minuend is less than the fraction in the subtrahend. So, in a way, we have to regroup, and that excludes what they call method 2. What we're going to uh, use the two methods, we're going to use one where we subtract from the whole, and we will do the other one where we changed it to a mixed number. Now one of the things I'd like to do here is take my original expression and I'd like to subtract the whole numbers before I get started. So I subtract 3 minus 2 and that gives me 1 and 1 fifth minus 1 fourth. I'm going to decompose 1 and 1 fifth to 1 plus 1 fifth minus 1 fourth. Now I can't subtract 1 fifth minus 1 fourth so I'm going to change the order. I have 1 minus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth. 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths plus 1 fifth. We'll find our like units, which is 20 ths. And 3 fourths is 15 20 ths. And 1 fifth is 4 20 ths. The sum is 19 twentieths, so that's approach one. Let's look at approach two, or the other one that we are going to discuss is uh, changing my fractions, uh, my mixed numbers into uh, improper fractions. Let's write the original expression, three and one-fifth minus two and one-fourth. Like the previous, we're going to subtract the holes first, so three minus two is one and one-fifth minus one-fourth. Now we'll convert one and one-fifth to an improper fraction. And we get six-fifths minus one-fourth. We now continue by finding our common unit, which is twentieths. We have six-fifths is equal to twenty-four twentieths, and one-fourth is equal to five twentieths. We find the difference between 24 and 5, and we get 19 twentieths. Both work quite well. Uh, we're going to work with a bigger number on the next problem, and we can see some of the advantages of technique 1, where we subtract from the whole, and some disadvantages to technique 2, where we use a improper. Okay, so now we're going to uh, use the first technique, and again we're going to subtract the holes first. So I get 7 minus 5 is 2. So I have 2 and 2 fifths minus 2 thirds. I now sub uh, decompose my menu end. I'm now going to change the order and subtract from the hole and add back the 2 fifths. I end up with one and one third plus two fifths. I'm going to decompose one plus one third plus two fifths. We'll work with those first. My common unit is fifteen. One third becomes five fifteenths, and two fifths becomes six fifteenths. The sum of the two fractions is eleven fifteenths, so the answer is one and eleven fifteenths. Now we're going to go and do it uh, by changing uh, my minuend into an improper fraction. I'll write the original expression: seven and two fifths minus five and two thirds. And we subtract the whole, so I end up with 2 and 2 fifths minus 2 
thirds. We're now going to convert my mixed number minuend into an improper fraction. So I get 12 fifths minus 2 thirds. I have to find my common unit, and that's 15. And 12 fifths becomes 36 fifteenths. And 2 thirds becomes 10 fifteenths. We find the difference between 36 fifteenths and 10 fifteenths. And we get 26 fifteenths. And that becomes 1 and 11 fifteenths. Those are the two methods. Uh, again, it, neither was particularly difficult this time, uh, but in the future you might end up working with some pretty large numbers using the second method where we use the improper fraction. They both work. They both work well. Let's do one more example. This is the one I was talking about. That uh, The second method is a little bit more difficult, but let's uh, start with the first method. And again, we're going to uh, subtract the whole numbers first. So 9 minus 2 is 7. So I have 7 and 2 thirds minus 6 sevenths. We're going to decompose 7 and 2 thirds is 7 plus 2 thirds minus 6 sevenths. Again, I can't subtract uh, 2 thirds minus 6 sevenths. So we're going to change the order. So we take our 6 sevenths from the whole and we add back our two-thirds. Seven minus six-sevenths is six and one-seventh plus two-thirds. We'll decompose six and one-seventh to six plus one-seventh plus two-thirds. We'll now work with the fractions first. So I have six plus, well, my common unit is twenty-firsts. I get 1 7th is 3 21sts, and 2 thirds is 14 21sts. I find the sum of the fractions, and I get 17 21sts. So the answer is 6 and 17 21sts. Let's do method 2. We'll write the original expression 9, 9 and 2 thirds minus 2 and 6 sevenths. We'll subtract the wholes and we get 7 and 2 thirds minus 6 sevenths. Now we need to convert 7 and 2 thirds to a mixed number. And I get 23 thirds minus 6 sevenths. Okay, here's uh, where we start to see our disadvantage. Let's find our common units first. So I, I have 23, uh, no, erase that. My common unit is 21sts. Now I need to multiply both the 3 and the 23 by 7 to get 21st. Uh, a lot of us can't do that in our head, so I, uh, I'm encouraging you not to guess. We're simply going to have to write it out, and we're going to have to find our numerator. So we have 7 times 3 is 21, and I have 7 times 2 is 14, plus 2 is 161. As you can see, we're getting into some larger numbers now. And I need to multiply three, uh, 6 thirds by 3 over 3, and I get 18 21sts. Again, we need to do our calculations separately here. So I have 161 minus 18. I regroup. I get my 3 and 4. And I have 143. 21sts. Well, how many 21s are there in 143? We're going to have to do another bit of work here. I'm going to divide that by 21. And I'm thinking 7, but 7 is going to be too big. So I uh, multiply 21 by 6, and I get 126. And we do a little subtracting here. 
I got a seven and a one. So that becomes six and seventeen twenty firsts. As you can see, this time method one's a little bit easier. And again, I'm really uh, tracing out all the steps almost painstakingly here so that you can see uh, exactly what's going on. You could easily go straight from this to this and then reverse the order very simply. So either way, they both work. Method one this time is a bit simpler. Okay, we have a word problem from our practice set, and I'm going to go over how to solve that, showing you two alternative methods. Let's read it first, and then we'll set up a tape diagram. Jasmine decided to spend six and one-half hours studying over the weekend. She spent one and one-fourth hours studying on Friday evening, and two and two-thirds hours on Saturday. How much longer does she need to spend on Sunday in order to reach her goal? All right. Tape diagram time. We know the whole. She that's the amount of time that she wants to study in all over the entire weekend. And then we're going to look at Friday. So we have Friday, one and one fourth. I'd love to see you guys study this much over the weekend. And Saturday is two and two thirds. And Sunday, we do not know. Now there's a couple ways to solve this. We could first find the sum of Friday and Saturday, then subtract that from the whole six and a half. Let's do it. Uh, one more example of uh, solving these problems. So I have six and one half. Minus, now first I'm going to find the sum of my two days that I know the amounts for. So I have one and one-fourth plus two and two-thirds. Six and one-half minus. Okay, we're going to find the sum of the whole number. So I have one plus two is three. And we're decomposing, so I have one-fourth plus two-thirds. Now, I'll find the sum of the fractions. So I have 3 plus my common unit is 12. 1 fourth becomes 3 twelfths. 2 thirds becomes 8 twelfths. So now I have 6 and 1 half minus 3 and 11 twelfths. Now we need to simplify that. Well, we had a few procedures here that we could use, and I am going to take from the whole. So we're going to just move things a little bit here, see if we can move the problem up here, give ourselves a little bit more space. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to first subtract the holes. So I have 6 minus 3 is 3 and 1 half minus 11 twelfths. Decomposing 3 plus 1 half minus 11 twelfths. Change the order 3 minus 11 twelfths plus 1 half. I subtract that and I get 2 and 1 twelfth plus 1 half. My common unit, I'm just going to move things a little bit more here so that we have a little bit more space. My common unit, well I, I can multiply those but really I know that I can multiply 2 times 6 to get 12. So that equals 2 plus 1 twelfth plus 6 twelfths equals 2 and 7 twelfths. We can also uh, solve this problem using a series of subtractions. So I could take my whole uh, 6 and 1 half and subtract Friday, which is 1 and 1 fourth. And then I can subtract my Saturday 2 and 2 thirds. 
All right, so I'm going to go step by step with this. We'll go from left to right. And I like the fact that I have 6 and 1 half minus 1 and 1 fourth because I can easily change my 6 and 1 half into 6 and 2 fourths minus 1 and 1 fourth minus 2 and 2 thirds. Okay, I'm going to work with the first expression and I can find that that is 5 and 1 fourth minus 2 and 2 thirds. Now we'll subtract the holes first. So 5 minus 2 is 3 and 1 fourth minus 2 thirds. Okay, uh, 1 fourth is less than 2 thirds, so I'm going to rearrange. So 3 minus 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. And 3 minus 2 thirds is 2 and 1 third. We'll decompose that right now. Plus 1 fourth. Okay, so 2 plus my common unit is 12. And 1 third is 4 twelfths. And 1 fourth is 3 twelfths. I find the sum and I get 2 and 7 twelfths once again. Okay, uh, two techniques uh, for solving this using uh, repeated subtraction or I find the sum of the two numbers that I'm going to subtract and subtract that sum from the minuend. Either way works.